Uh, hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we continue our look at uh, computing. And in this video, we are going to discuss um, uh, computer system hardware. In the previous uh, video, we did mention to say we have four parts. Uh, uh, the computer system is made up of uh, four parts, namely uh, computer hardware, computer software, uh, data, and the users. So the four make up um, the computer system. Now, you recall again, we had said um, a system is a collection of interrelated components that work together to accomplish a goal. So when you talk about the computer system, we are saying we have uh, the hardware components of the computer, the software components of the computer, the data, and the users, they are working together to accomplish a task, to accomplish a task. So now we'll start looking at each of these um, uh, components individually. So for a start, we are going to discuss um, computer hardware. Now, when we, uh, we, we did define computer hardware as um, the physical parts of um, the physical parts of um, a computer system. Uh, sorry about this, I just want to open. Okay, so um, we had said, uh, when we talk about um, computer hardware, we are talking about uh, the physical parts of, um, of, um, of the computer. The parts that you are able to, to see and touch, those parts make up um, the computer hardware. Um, what you're seeing on the, on the screen now is um, just an example of uh, the common uh, hardware parts of the computer that you see. Uh, for example, we have uh, the monitor or the display unit, um, which we use to, to, to receive, an out, uh, which we get, we use to get feedback from the computer. We have um, the keyboard, we have uh, speakers, we have um, the system unit here where um, things like uh, where you connect your flash drives, um, you connect your memory cards, etc. cetera. Um, the mouse, um, a flash memory card reader, a printer. So all the physical parts of the computer that you are able to see and touch, including the cables, they make up um, the computer hardware. So when you hear someone talking about computer hardware, they just mean um, these physical parts of um, the computer. They, um, that is what uh, computer hardware is. Now, these different uh, hardware components, they have uh, different tasks. Uh, each of them uh, performs different, a, diff uh, a specific task. For example, um, when we talk about um, the monitor or the display unit, its role is to give output uh, from the computer. You recall from our definition of the computer, we had said um, uh, it's an electronic machine that accepts in in input, work on the input, that is process the input to give uh, the desired output. So in that definition, the things that a computer does have been mentioned. We have um, devices that should we are, uh, that, that accept input from the users. So in this case, for example, we have uh, devices such as um, the keyboard, um, um, the mouse. So those act as uh, input devices. Then we also have other components that do the processing. Now the processing is handled inside here in a part uh, in, uh, by a component called the central processing unit, which we'll talk about uh, shortly. Then we also have other components. We also have other components that um, are used to give output, for example. So here we have um, the printer uh, as an example. Then we also have other components um, which are used to store data. Uh, it's not always that um, after data has been collected, it will be discarded right there and then. 
uh, in some cases we may want to keep that data. Uh, that is where devices such as um, the, the flash drive, the flash memory, the hard drive comes in. And even while the computer is working, it needs a uh, memory for it to process whatever it's doing. So the different hardware components of um, a computer, uh, they perform, each of them performs um, its own task. Okay, so the different components that you have seen, remember from just this video, uh, the previous slide, we are looking at um, uh, things like the keyboard, uh, the mouse, uh, the, 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 the display unit, uh, uh, yeah, the display unit, the hard drive, etc. Now, those components, we, uh, those components have been grouped into units. Those components have been grouped into units. Now, the units that we that we have, the units that we have, uh, those components which perform the same task, uh, we group them in one unit. So, for example, all the components that get input from the users, all the components that are used for getting input from the users, they are put in the input output unit. The components responsible for processing are put in the central processing unit. The components responsible for storage, data storage, are put in the memory unit. So the different components of the computer have been grouped or have been put in units based on the task which they, which they do. Okay, so the three main components that we have are the input output unit, which comprises of all the input and output devices. So those, you find them um, in the first unit. The memory unit, all the components that have to do with storage, whether it be temporal storage, permanent storage, they'll be in the memory unit. Then the third component um, is a central processing unit, which is responsible for processing the data. Remember when, when we discussed the concept of processing, we did say processing will involve things like performing calculations, things like uh, performing comparisons, things like um, yeah, performing comparisons and other uh, operations. So those are handled in the central processing unit. So in this uh, video, I'll concentrate on um, the central processing unit. Then in the coming um, uh, video or videos, we'll look at uh, the input output unit and the memory unit. Okay, so uh, I've already given, um, explained the uh, computer system hardware and uh, here now we're just talking about the same thing, what the input output unit is used for, what the central processing unit is used for, what the memory unit is used for. Now let's talk about um, the central processing unit. Uh, after data has been collected using the input uh, devices, they are passed on to the central processing unit. This central processing unit um, is the one that is responsible for the processing. Now, in order to do that, the central processing unit has three components. The three components of uh, the central processing unit are one, the control unit, two, the arithmetic logic unit, and uh, three, the registers. So these three components, they make up the central processing unit and they are the ones that are used in, uh, in data processing. So data processing, we're talking about the steps that are taken in converting data into information. So it is a, a central processing unit that is responsible for that. And it is often considered as the brain of the computer. Now, let's talk about these components of uh, the computer. We talked about the arithmetic logic unit, um, this, the control unit and the registers. Arithmetic logic unit. The arithmetic logic unit is responsible for performing the arithmetic and uh, logic operations on the data that is made available to it. 
when we talk about arithmetic, we're talking about calculations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc. So the arithmetic logic unit is responsible for performing that task. It is responsible for performing the arithmetic calculations. So all the additions, the subtractions, they are handled by the arithmetic logic unit. Logic operations. Logic operations, we're talking about things to do with comparison. Things to do with uh, comparison. For example, um, when you guys are trying to are trying to log into your into any system, for example, let's say your bank. Okay, uh, let's say you're trying to 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 log into your bank account. Um, what you have done, you have um, you have entered, uh, or when you are signing up uh, to open that account, a pin was issued to you, or uh, you created a pin. So for this pin, it has been stored somewhere on the bank's computer. Now, when you log in, when you're logging in, you also enter a pin. You also enter a pin. Now, what the arithmetic logic unit will do is it will compare. It will check whether the stored pin matches with the entered pin. This is an example of a comparison. Uh, the comparison to check whether what, what is stored on the system matches with what has been entered. And if it does, then you are granted access. If not, um, if not, um, your, 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 your request is, uh, is denied. Um, the other example that we can think of, again, when you, let's say you're trying to make a phone call. When you're trying to make a phone call, if you don't have, um, if you don't have enough credit, you get a message to say you have insufficient funds to make this call. Now, that is possible because of the comparison that is done. So uh, what happens is uh, the computer system, the arithmetic logic unit, checks whether the credit that you have is greater or equal to the required. Let's say if I, if I, if I require maybe two kwacha to make a call and what I have is less than two kwacha, it will not uh, allow me to go ahead. So again, that's an example of a comparison. So um, arithmetic logic unit is responsible for all these um, for all these uh, uh, calculations, all these operations. Um, the control unit, the control unit is responsible for organizing the process, the processing of data and instructions. Now the control unit controls and coordinates the activities, all the activities of the other units of the computer. Um, when, when you use words like control, words like coordinating, that means organizing, that means being in charge. Um, for some of you, you've had opportunities when you were growing up, maybe your parents are, are going away, maybe for a few hours or a few days, they give you the opportunity to say you are in charge of the home and it was your responsibility to assign duties to to assign duties to your siblings and also to make sure that they are doing their work correctly. If there's someone who is not doing their part, you intervene, you, you remind them to say, do this uh, task in this way. You were in control, you were in charge, you were responsible. So the control unit does a similar thing. The control unit controls and coordinates the activities of the other units of um, the computer. They control and coordinate the other activity, all the activities of the computer. So it is the control unit, for example, that determines uh, at what rate um, sound should be sent to the speakers. Okay. It is a control unit that determines at what rate um, 
uh, a video should be sent to, 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 to the display unit, for example. If you are doing, if uh, if you are running two applications, you are doing two things at a time. Maybe let's say you are using uh, WhatsApp and uh, some other application. Okay, it is the control unit that is responsible for determining when the WhatsApp application will be given a chance to use the display unit, when uh, the other application will be given a chance to use the display unit. So the control unit coordinates all the activities of um, the computer all the activities of all the activities of all the units in the computer um, the third component of uh, the central processing unit is the registers now the registers these are also referred to as the working um, uh, the, 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 the working memory space of um, the CPU when the CPU is working, it needs um, it needs some storage. It needs to store the data that it works on. Now, one thing that we need to to mention: um, when the central processing unit is working, it will work on one instruction at a time. The only reason why we see the uh, things moving more more or less at the same time is because the computer moves at, works at a very fast speed. Remember when we're looking at the characteristics of um, um, the computer that has made it attractive, one of them was the speed. And we said computers are able to handle millions of instructions per second. So because of that, the CPU will be doing things very fast. And to, to our eyes, things appear to move at the same time. But in reality, the central processing unit um, handles one piece of data at a time. So uh, the other bits of data that are, have come in will have to wait for the current uh, piece of data to be worked on. And after it has, uh, that bit has been worked on, the next part will come in and be worked on. So that part also which has been worked on, it also needs to be stored somewhere until everything has been processed and given to the users. So the registers will come in to store the data as well as the instructions during processing. Now, registers, these are small storage units, small storage uh, space, um, which will only store the data that is currently being worked on, the data that is uh, currently uh, being worked on. All right. So these are the parts that make up the central processing unit. These I've already explained. Okay, this, all these I've mentioned. Okay, now registers. Okay, we have said uh, these are high speed storage areas within the CPU. They have a small storage and we just use them to when tests are being performed. So that they store the data um, and instructions while they are being processed. Now, the registers are referred to as the CPU working memory, like I've already mentioned. And these registers, there are a number of them, and each of them has got uh, a specific task. The common um, or some important registers that you have, uh, that we have in computers, are uh, one, we have the accumulator. Now, this accumulator stores the results of arithmetic and logic operations. Um, imagine, let's say, the computer is trying to add 20 numbers. Uh, maybe let's say it's trying to add numbers from 1 to 20. It says 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, all the way up to 20. Now, the way that it will do, uh, that it will work is, it will get the first two numbers, 1 plus 2. The answer that it gets, it will store in the accumulator. So a three will be stored there. Then it will pick the next number. It has added one and two. So the next number it will get to be three. So three plus the answer that is in the accumulator, uh, three plus three, it will give you six. Okay, so the computer will be adding those two, those numbers two at a time, the first and the second. The, se uh, the result, you add the third one. Now, the values, the result that, I, that is being obtained is going to be stored in the accumulator, okay? Um, 
the, the word itself, um, I'm sure you've heard of words like accumulating. No, he has accumulated wealth, meaning he has gathered, he has uh, collected. So that is what the accumulator does. So the, the results uh, of arithmetic computation uh, are stored here. The other important register that we have is uh, the instruction register. Now the instruction register contains the current instruction, uh, uh, contains the current in instruction most recently fetched. Now, when the computer is performing a task, there will be a number of, um, of instructions to be performed. Maybe there are 30, 40, or there, there, there will be a number of, um, there will be a number of, um, of, 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 of um, instructions. Now, these instructions, the computer will handle one instruction at a time. So um, what will happen is uh, the instruction that has been fetched will be taken to, um, will be taken to, um, in, into the instruction register. Okay, they'll be taken into the instruction register so that they are worked on. Um, the program counter, the program counter contains the address of the next instruction to be processed. So remember, we are just from saying there could be 20 or 30 instructions to be performed. So when the, 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 first, the, when the first instruction is collected, it is placed in the instruction register. The program counter keeps track of where the next instruction is. Since we have done instruction number one, the next instruction should be number two. So the program counter will keep the address of that, uh, that location. Okay. The other registers that we have, uh, the data register, this one here, the data register stores the operand and any other data. Now, when we talk about operand, um, remember I was just giving an example to say, uh, you, may, you may want to add numbers. So let's say one uh, plus two. Uh, uh, now, in this operation where you're trying to add two numbers, these two numbers you're trying to add, um, the data register uh, are the operands the data that is being worked on in an operation are what we refer to as the operand. Then this one is the instruction that you are giving. The instruction that you are giving in this case is, can you add these two numbers? So this instruction is going to be stored in the, is, is going to be stored in the, uh, the, the, when it is fetched, it's going to be stored in the, in the instruction register. Now, if there's another instruction, so let's say, for example, we have a scenario like this one. Uh, let me just add something here. Uh, one plus that minus four. Okay. Let's say we have uh, this as our calculation, one plus one, one plus two minus four. Now, um, the computer will handle one operation at a time. So the first instruction to be fetched will be this addition instruction. So it will be gotten and it will be put in the instruction register. Then the program counter will keep track of the next instruction. Where is the next instruction located? So the address in memory where this instruction is going to be uh, in a short while. Uh, we'll talk about uh, memory as well. So that is um, about the about this tool. So I just came up with this example to explain the instruction register and uh, the program counter. Now let's look at um, the data register since I had already started talking about this one. Data register, we are saying it stores the operands. It stores uh, the operands. So the operands we're talking about, we're talking about this data which is being manipulated in an operation. Those are the, the operands. So um, we have the operand one, operand two, operand four. 
So these two uh, operands, when they're being worked on, they will be stored in um, in the in in the in, in 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 the data register. So after the calculation has been done, for example, one plus two is three. That result taken to the accumulator. Okay. The next step, the next instruction is fetched, and this operand also is loaded into the data uh, register. The memory address register. The memory address register contains the address of the next location in memory to be accessed. Um, when the computer is working, these values that are being worked on will be stored in memory. Now, the way computer memory is, is that it is made up of, uh, it is made up of cells. It is made up of, uh, of cells. Now, when we talk about cells, we're talking about uh, boxes like this. And uh, what you have is that uh, in each of these cell, there will be some data. So for example, um, the first data item could be here. The second dat data item will be here. The third data item will be here. I'm just getting these, uh, these numbers. They're the ones I've brought here. So the memory address register will keep track of where the next data item is. When we get item number one here, for example, the next data item is number two. So the memory address register will contain the address of the next location of the data. The next address that we're supposed to go to, uh, that the computer is supposed to go to, will be kept here. Um, the memory buffer register. The memory buffer register temporarily stores data from memory. It temporarily stores data from memory or the data to be sent to memory. So these are the most, some of the important uh, registers that we can, um, that we can, uh, we can discuss. Of course, there are a number of registers, but I think these, these are enough at least to give us uh, a head start. You will come across other registers later on as you advance, maybe in your training, uh, but I think these are the, some of the important registers you will come across. Uh, control unit, I already talked about what it does. Now, quickly, uh, the memory unit. The memory unit, we had mentioned to say all the, all, 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 all the components to do with uh, data storage will be, uh, all, all those components that deal with data storage uh, uh, make up uh, the memory unit. So the main components of the memory unit consist of uh, the cache memory and the primary memory, cache memory and the primary memory. Uh, primary memory or the main memory of the computer is used to store the data and instructions during execution of um, the instruction. Now, um, we are just from talking about registers. And we gave a similar definition of um, a similar definition when we we're talking about uh, registers. We had said um, the registers; these are they, they store data and instructions while they, while they are being processed, and that is true. Even the primary memory does the same thing. Now, um, the way uh, memory is organized in a computer. We'll, we'll talk more about this in detail. Is um, um sorry about that. Okay. Um, primary memory. Uh, we it also stores data and instruction during um, the execution of uh, the instruction. So uh, the way memory is organized. You find that, uh, let me just see if I have, okay, good. Yeah, so we have the processor here and in, inside the processor, we have uh, the registers. Next comes the cache memory. After the cache memory, we have the main memory here or the primary memory. So 
these will work together. Uh, the, the, the different memory components will work together to ensure that your computer works at an acceptable speed, as well as uh, it's, it's not expensive. Now, um, these different components of memory, they, 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 they are working in terms of speed differs. Um, the RAM, the speed of the RAM is slower compared to the cache. The speed of the registers is faster compared to these. Now, the material used to make registers is expensive, such that if we just had very big registers like this, the computers will not be affordable. Okay, and if we just had the RAM, which is big like this, um, without the registers, the speed, the performance of the computer will not be okay. So um, to, to balance up that, to compensate for that, uh, to ensure that computers work at a speed that is acceptable, and at the same time, we, we also have um, an affordable computer. The different memory units, different component memory components are used. The registers, uh, because they are more expensive, we have the small size of the register. The cache, which is less expensive compared to the registers, but more expensive compared to the RAM, we have a bigger component, but not as big as the RAM. So that is the idea. Now, why this arrangement? Uh, the reason is because um, of the cost. I will say more when we come to computer memory, which should be the next unit uh, we'll cover. Uh, yes, the next unit that we are going to cover. So um, the memory unit we are saying, it stores data while it's being worked on, data and instructions when they are being worked on. So what will happen is the memory unit, that um, whatever is being worked on is going to be loaded uh, into the next memory, which is the cache, and from the cache memory, loaded into loaded into the registers for them to be worked on. Um, it's like when you when people are trying to offload things from a truck, they usually form a chain. And what will happen is there will be people from the who are in the truck when they get an item, they pass it on to the next group of people. The next group, of, uh, the next person passes it on to the third person until it reaches where it's going. That is a similar concept, except here data and instructions are supposed to be worked on. So what will happen is from the, uh, the main memory, uh, data and instructions will be passed to the cache. From the cache, a bit will be passed on, uh, uh, it will be passed on to the registers. The registers, when they are worked on, are uh, taken back to memory unit in that a uh, similar chain or that pattern. Okay, um, the memory unit, I'll say more on this. So in addition to the main memory, we, are, we also have another kind of uh, storage, which is uh, the secondary memory. So this form the memory unit. I don't intend to say much on the memory in this particular video, because I know that is where we'll go to in the next uh, video. So please bear with me. I'll just uh, quickly go through this, then come back to, to them in the next uh, um, video. Um, instruction cycle, the instruction cycle. The instruction cycle, um, we've talked about what the computer does. Even in the definition, it's all there. Accept input, work on the input, give out the desired output. Now, to perform this task, to perform this task, um, the CPU will perform this task uh, in a series of steps. And this forms what is called the instruction cycle, the instruction cycle. Um, the instruction cycle, Let's say, for example, you want to upload the photo, or you want to, yeah, yes, you want to upload the photo, or you you want to send a text message. Uploading a photo, let me use that one. Now, your photo could be stored in main memory. 
everything that is being worked on will be in main memory. So what needs to be done is the processor, uh, the control unit, the arithmetic logic unit, it need, it's the one that will do the processing. But what it's processing is currently in the main memory. So it has to be collected from there. It has to be fetched. So that is a starting point. The instruction will be fetched from the main memory. Now, when it is fetched, the next stage that it, that, that it will go through is to be decoded. Now, decoding, this is where the instruction is broken down into smaller components so that the CPU understands what it's supposed to do. If you have an instruction like this one, uh, like the one we had earlier, where we had one plus two plus three plus four plus five, for example, um, times, let me do this. Uh, okay. You have an instruction like this, one plus two plus three plus four plus open brackets, five times six, close bracket. Um, an instruction like this one will be fetched from the computer, uh, from the memory. Now, before it is worked on, the computer needs to understand what it needs to do. So it's going to decode. Now in decoding, it will break down this instruction in smaller parts. So for example, it will, it will look at this one, understand what it's supposed to do. Look at that part, understand what it's supposed to do. Look at this part, understand what it's supposed to do. Look at this part, understand what it's supposed to do. Look at this part. So breaking down these instructions into smaller parts so that they can be handled or so that it understands what it's supposed to do. So it knows that it's supposed to add some numbers and also multiply some numbers. Obviously, it will also have to understand the order in which this will be executed. Remember, in your primary school, you talked about board mass, so it needs to understand. Now, that, is, that all takes place in the decoding part. After the decoding has been done, the computer knows exactly what it has to do. The next part now is to execute those instructions. The next part is to execute the instructions to perform. So in this case, for example, to perform this calculation, that is the execution. Now, after the execution, meaning processing this instruction, after the instruction has been worked on, it will now be sent back to the main memory for storage, to now be sent for main memory for storage. And then if there's any other instruction to be fetched, it will follow a similar cycle. So that's about the instruction cycle. That's about the instruction cycle. The next few videos are just explaining what happens. The same things, the fetching, the decoding, which I've talked about, the executing, the storing. So this is just summarizing that. Okay. Um, the last part of this unit, um, we did mention to say, um, there are different units in the computer. We talked about the memory unit, the input output unit, the uh, processing unit. Now, these components, they have to work together to accomplish the task, whatever co uh, the computer does, it has to, to be done by this. Now, how does this work? Um, we have, for example, the memory unit. Uh, we have the memory unit. Okay, let me just open this. Um, so what you have here, what you're seeing is uh, what you typically see inside the computer. I will later on talk about uh, what this is, or maybe I should mention this is uh, what is referred to as the motherboard in a computer. Now, most of the components that you find in the computer will reside on this, on this motherboard. So the processor that we have will be here. This is where the processor will be. Then um, the memory unit, the main memory will be here. The main memory, these are the slots for the main memory. Then input output units will connect via 
these different ports, audio, etc. So the, there will be ports here where these will be connected. Okay, now um, these different components, some components will be here. Sorry, okay. Some components will be here, the, main, the, the RAM, uh, the cache memory will be inside this part. Um, then, uh, so we have the RAM here, we have the input output units here, etc. Now, how do these get to communicate? How do these get to in interact? These are connected by what is referred to as a bus. They are referred to, uh, they are connected by what is referred to as a bus. These electronic wires you're talking about, you can see here, these different wires, I'm sure even in your watches, uh, uh, toys, you have seen this. So the bus, um, when we talk about a bus, we're talking about a set of electronic signal pathways that allow information and signal to travel between components inside or outside the computer. Um, when you have data on your flash and you want it to be sent to memory, to, to be processed, that data will be, will have to pass through, um, will, will, will be sent, uh, will be sent through this bus. Now, when we talk about a bus, we're saying an electronic signal pathway that allows information and signal to travel between components inside or outside the computer. All right. So um, these signals, these small lines here, are they make up the bus. Now, we have the system bus which is divided into two parts. So the computer bus, which is also referred to as, uh, uh, yeah, the computer bus uh, has two parts. We have uh, two types. Uh, the two types are namely the internal bus and the external bus. The internal bus, all the components inside the motherboard, like the CPU, the system memory, they are connected by the internal bus. So here, all the components which reside here, we have the processor, we have the RAM, we have the ROM, uh, all the components that are here, they are connected using an internal bus, internal bus, meaning it's inside. Now, those components from outside, for example, when you are connecting your mouse to the, uh, uh, yeah, the mouse may be to the USB port or to the VGA port, uh, connecting um, uh, USB is the most common. So let me use that one. When you are connecting um, components like your flash drive, uh, your memory card to that, to that card uh, slot, those are coming are outside. They are not on the motherboard. So we refer to this, there's a second uh, part of the system, the computer system, uh, bus, and that is uh, the external bus. So for the external bus, uh, those components which are not on the motherboard, they are connected via the external, uh, the external bus. So the different components, the components that we use for input output, the components that you use for your memory, ex external memory, etc., uh, all those are connected on the external bus. Now, what makes up this system bus? The, the bus that we are talking about, the computer bus, which we also refer to as a system bus, is made up of three components, or three, uh, yes, three components. These are namely the data bus, the address bus, the control bus. Now, what we are trying to say is this. When you look at these different uh, components here, the wires that you can see here, those small wires. Now, there are some wires that are responsible for carrying data. There are some wires that are responsible for carrying the instruction to be performed. There are some instructions, there are some wires that are responsible for carrying control information. For example, 
Oh yeah, so data bus, it transfers the data between the CPU and the memory. The address bus, remember when we're talking about um, the registers, we did talk about the memory address register, the program counter. Now, when the computer is working, it needs to know where the a particular instruction is. So details to do with the address, the address of uh, um, the, the, the address of the data, the address of uh, the next instruction, for example, will be carried via the address bus. Then we have the control bus. Now the control bus is the one that will specify whether the data you are sending is to be read, whether you are reading from memory or you are writing to the memory, those details will be carried here. So the instruction, what needs to be done? It will be carried on the control bus. Where the address will be carried on the address bus. What data are we dealing with? It will be stored on the data bus. So this is how the system bus is made up of. Then we have the expansion bus. Now the expansion bus, uh, which is also called the, the external bus, all the devices that are not part, that we connect from outside the computer, things like the monitor, things like the keyboard, things like the printer, those things that you connect on the back of, uh, at, the back, at the back of your computer, those are connected via the external bus. I hope I can find something. Uh, let me see. Okay, yeah. So when you're connecting, for example, we have um, the mouse. So these components, you connect them to the back of the computer here. So here where you are connecting, that is part of um, that is part of your system bus. That is part of your external external ex external bus. So uh, the external bus is also referred to as uh, the expansion um, the expansion bus. So that's um, that's that. Let me see if I have to say anything. Okay. So on the ex ex expansion bus, you find the ports where we connect different components. Now, um, the last thing I'll talk about, performance of a computer. What affects the performance of a computer? The performance of a computer is affected by a number of reasons, things like the size of the register, things like the size of the RAM, things like the size of the bus. Those components affect the performance of uh, the computer. So how they affect, I'll leave you guys to do a bit of research. Uh, for example, how does the size of uh, the bus affect the performance of the computer? How does the size of the register affect the size of the, uh, the performance of the computer, etc. So that's that. Uh, this I'll leave uh, up to you guys to look at. So thank you very much for, for watching the video. In case you have any queries, any concerns, maybe as you do your research, you find some questions that are not making sense to you, you can uh, feel free to post in our Google Classroom group and uh, I'll be able to address them uh, every Wednesday like we, like we agreed. Now, um, given the way things are, are going uh, regarding this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we, uh, like I even said in class, we don't know how things will go. The best that you can do, please study. I'll keep sending these videos. Don't relax. Don't pack the, uh, your material. Continue studying them. And as much as possible, let us interact. We have the Google Classroom uh, group, so you can uh, post your questions there. And uh, as much as possible, I'll respond to them, but not only me alone, even uh, your colleagues will be able to, um, to comment so please let's interact so that uh, together, despite the challenge that we are facing of not being able to meet physically, we can um, still at least uh, push on and um, continue with our lectures. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.